After 11 years of support, Microsoft finally closes the doors for Windows 7 and they will no longer be providing security patches or bug fixes to the operating system. But today, I present the Windows 7 Survival Guide, the guide for users who still want to use Windows 7 after end of support. Now before we actually get to the ways to keep yourself secure after 2020 on Windows 7, I do want to address one thing and that's end of life in general. Microsoft really makes end of life seem like it's a really bad thing and while it is, it, it kind of is a bad thing. They make it seem like it's the end of the world. It's a super scary thing. They always put these pop-ups on the on your screen saying that you need to upgrade to Windows 10. It's a much more secure operating system. And they even advertise it in some cases that the minute you turn on your computer, uh, you'll get a bunch of viruses and all your information is gone. And they just advertise it like that's how computers work. And unless you're a really dumb user on the internet, it doesn't work like that. If you're a careful user, you can still use an unsupported operating system. I'm using unsupported operating systems, and yes, I, I am. I am using Windows 7 even today. And I use an iPhone 5C and iOS 10.3.3. iOS 10 is like three years old now, and I have been having zero issues with it whatsoever. And my security has not been compromised. But if you don't want to compare apples to Windows, then let's explain the Windows XP and Windows Vista community around the world. Now while the now while the user base is really small, there are still people dedicated to using those operating systems. If you go to msfn.org and we scroll down to older NT family OSs, there's still people who want to use Windows XP and Vista and they're dedicated to using them and these people have been having minimal issues. Okay, they've been having issues but they're using Windows Vista and XP and they've been doing just fine. They've been having little issues. So don't think about it like like our end of support is a bad thing. There's still people in the world using unsupported platforms. I persuade you guys to not think of it as the end of the world. Please don't take it like that. I'm not saying I persuade the usage of older operating systems. I'm just saying that some people make a big deal over unsupported platforms when really they're kind of just overreacting because you just need to take a different perspective on it. And even then, there's a lot of other layers of security to an operating system than just Windows Update. You still, if you have an up-to-date web browser, which itself detects the internet, if a program is bad or a website is bad, then it detects it and it doesn't let you go onto the website for obvious reasons. Then, if you still download the program, there's the antivirus, which scans any program on the computer before you can run it or you can download it, etc. And then it gets to Windows Update. Think about it like that where you have extra layers of security as well. So I just wanted to address that before we address the ways to stay secure after 2020. So, the first thing. Extended security updates. Now, Windows XP and Vista in the past have had patches and ways to extend updates until 2019 slash 2020. Windows XP is, has had Windows Embedded POS Ready 2009 updates until 2019, and Windows Vista has been using Windows Server 2008 updates until recently, January 2020. However, what about Windows 7? Now, there's two ways. One of them I don't recommend, and this one is uh, using extended security update or paid extended security updates that Microsoft announced in 2018. Now, the thing with these is that they're paid and they're only available to small businesses. But some guy on the internet found a way to get these updates illegally or get these updates without paying for anything. Now, that is definitely software piracy because these updates are meant to be paid for. So I can't condone that. And there, and you can technically get a support until 2023, but again, I don't condone that. The other option which I can recommend is using Windows Embedded POS Ready 7 updates. Um, so Windows Embedded POS Ready 7 is an operating system meant for point of sale systems, which is Windows 7 based. Uh, I'll link more information to that in a video I made about a year ago in the description and it's support until October of 2021 which is great. We, if we find a way to use these updates on Windows 7, because it's again, POS Ready 7 is, an, is a Windows 7 based operating system, we can use those updates and apply them to Windows 7 and we can get security updates until October 2021. However, I can't confirm this yet because at, at the time of recording this video, it's only January 20th and next patch Tuesday is the 11th of February. So on February 11th or sometime after that, I will put a pinned comment 
uh, in the comments section regarding what the status of that is, if it's possible or if it's not possible. Uh, but that's just something to think about. So the next thing I want to talk about is web browsers. Currently, pretty much all major web browsers are being still up to date on Windows 7. Google Chrome, which is the major web browser that everyone uses today, um, this is still up to date. If I go to about Chrome, you can see that this is version 79 of Chrome and it is up to date. And Google has made a statement that they are committed to keeping Google Chrome updated until mid-2021, which is great because that's at least, a, and that's at least, okay? So they might keep updating, but that's at least another one and a half years of support from Google Chrome. And Firefox still works and stuff like that. So web browsers themselves, that's not an issue. You can still easily get a web browser. And, and to my knowledge, Firefox currently has no plans on ending support for Windows 7. The majority of web browsers that I've seen on the internet are still up to date. Now, just like web browsers, major antivirus programs are still updated on Windows 7. And that goes for Windows XP and Vista as well. Like, I mean, it's pretty impressive. I personally use AVG antivirus. This is the latest version of AVG. Um, and I, this is what I use. Uh, pretty much every single antivirus on the internet still supports Windows 7. And I don't see a major antivirus programs ending support for Windows 7 anytime soon. And if they do, they're, they're probably still going to be providing definition updates, which are basically like the difference between mainstream support and extended support, which is, which if they end support for an antivirus, they're probably only going to end support for like major feature updates. But in terms of security and definition updates, it's, it, they're still going to go on. Major antiviruses are still usable on Windows 7. Another thing I recommend doing is downloading Malwarebytes, which I recommend doing this um, if you're really cautious about your security. And even then, you should still download Malwarebytes and just running a scan on the computer every once in a while. So Malwarebytes is a good program to use to scan and just scan every once in a while, maybe every week and get rid of threats like that. So the next thing I recommend doing is going cloud-based. Now, for those people who really don't want files stolen on their computer, this is why I recommend going cloud-based. When you're storing sensitive data that you really care about, I highly recommend going cloud-based so that information is not going to be stolen locally. So if your computer itself gets infected, your your files are going to be stored on the cloud and you can quickly change your password if you need to and your files are going to be safe. So that's what I recommend doing. So you can use OneDrive, Google Drive, anything cloud-based. So I that's something I also recommend. And the final thing I recommend doing after Windows 7 end of support is keeping every single program up to date. Uh, for example, and this is just an example, I'm not going to go through like every single program, but uh, like your office suite of programs, Office 2016. Um, I'm pretty sure it's dedicated to keeping Windows 7 supported until at least January 2025. Or actually, that's when Office 2016 ends support in general. So you have at least five years of support when if you're using Office 2016. And, and for Office 365, I'm not completely sure about that because I'm not really familiar with Office 365 that much. Uh, but in terms of like regular Office 2016, you're going to get guaranteed support until 20, 2025, which is five years. So you have, you're getting programs that are supported for at least an extra five years. So in terms of programs, just keep your programs up to date. And even if you're using outdated programs, make sure they're just not internet based because if you're using internet based programs, then, uh, yeah, then you're going to run into some serious issues. And that should be it in terms of using windows seven after end of support again, it's not that bad when you think about it. Programs are still being up to date and you're still getting web browsers that are up to date and you're still getting antiviruses that are still up to date. So for those of you who think that Windows 7 is not a usable platform until after 2020, um, that is definitely not true. You can still use Windows 7 just fine and you will still be able to use these features just as you would on Windows 10. And that is the end of my Windows 7 Survival Guide 2020 edition. I plan on making one of these at least uh, once every year uh, until I feel like it's definitely not going to work anymore. So hopefully you all enjoyed this video. Hopefully this gave you an insight on how you can use Windows 7 after end of support. If you need any help with Windows 7 specifically, leave questions down in the comments. Hopefully the community can help you. Hopefully I can help you if I see the comments. And I will see you all later.